Hey, it's John and Mike, BrewDashShoes.com, also known as Two Guys and a Camper. We're doing this, it's uh, COVID days, and, but thankfully, you know, every once in a while, I get to walk up the street to my friend Mike's house, and he has beer. We turn on the camera, we drink it, and we talk about it. Uh, this time, I have, it, uh, what I, I see is three glasses of beer right here in front of me, and I think I'm gonna let Mike do some more talking about what exactly yeah. we have here. You've got some tasting to do. Because I have some tasting to do, that's right. All right, well, you asked for it, you wanted it, and there'll <laughs> be more of this, but this is a yeast comparison experiment. Wow. So it's, this is one big batch of brown ale. Uh, I made seven gallons worth of brown ale, and then I, uh, once it was all done, I split it into three different fermenters. I did uh, a little over two gallons per fermenter. So, and then, but each fermenter got a different yeast. So what you're working on now as you taste it is, think about yeast character, think about how it plays off the brown ale, and then um, see what kind of differences you can uh, detect. Now they are all, this is an English yeast comparison. And one of the reasons is I do brew, I do tend to brew a lot of English style beers, or I, or I ferment a lot of my beers with English style yeast, and I'm always playing with yeast trying to find ones I like. So my thought process here was, well, let's go with these three, which are somewhat standard. Um, and I'll take one of these that I really like, and then we'll put them against two other ones in the future. So let me give you the recipe while John keeps tasting. So this is a seven gallon batch of beer. This is for a seven gallon batch of beer, which is 26 and a half liters. I did 11 pounds of Maris Otter, or five kilograms. I did uh, one pound, and this is a sort of unique ingredient to the recipe, of the blonde roasted oat malt oh. from Greece that we got last year That's at NAC. Right. I still have my one pound. And um, I really like the way it comes through in this beer. Maybe we can talk about that later. But so that's one pound of that or 450 grams. Then it's 340 grams of uh, pale chocolate malt at 220 Levabon. And it's 340 grams of Simpson's Light Crystal, which is uh, 45 Levabon. Okay, and now interestingly enough, the hops for this, because I was just trying to use up some hops, but I have some interesting Fuggles. English hops. Hold on, be ready. It's, uh, it's 60 minutes, I did one ounce of Challenger. Challenger. And then with 10 minutes to go, I did one ounce of Fuggle. Fuggles. All right, Congratulations. let me give you a little bit of low down on the water chemistry here. So this is, I used basically our tap water. Um, but then I modified it with some with a, a pretty good hand of gypsum. So hmm. what I did here is how many the, grams in for the seven? End, I'll, I'll get to that. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're wrecking my mojo. Uh, so it's 113 ppm of calcium, 264 ppm of chloride, 151 ppm of sulfate, and uh, 114 ppm of sodium. And that's one of the issues that we fight yep. here. But that gives you a chloride to sulfate ratio of about 1.7 to 1. Um, so the gypsum I added to the gypsum, this was uh, five grams of gypsum added in the mash. And because of the darker malts, I didn't need to add any lactic acid, which I usually do to hit my mash pH. Yep. So my mash pH was about 5.2. My mash temperature was 154 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I don't remember what that is in Celsius, sorry. Um, and so there you go. Um, that's the base beer. I think that this beer, color-wise, as far as a brown ale has gone, <laughs> gone, I love the color of this beer. That's great. I think this is one of the first brown ales where I've really hit what I view yep. as as brown ale should be. It's nice. I love the color of it. Yeah. So before I get into what the yeasts are, uh, specifically the Arlingus yeasts, um, why don't I just lay this information out there too? Beer one had a finishing gravity of 1010. Okay. Um, beer two had a fin oh, I'm sorry, a finishing gravity of 1008. Okay, a little drier. And beer three is 1012. Okay. Okay. Wow. So it goes 10, 8, 12. 10, 8, 12. Yes. Okay. All right, number one. This one had uh, a lot of character uh -huh. on the flavor. Okay. And then. Well, let me taste it again. I think I'm detecting some diacetyl. Okay. But there is a there is some slickness. Something in here that I detect that um, we'll talk about after you get okay. there. Okay. There is a, a less of a there's there's a more of a coating uh -huh. on my palate. Yep. My tongue, everything. Okay. Yep. About that. But English definitely an English style. Yeah. Lots of esters. Yep. It's good. Yep. Okay. Number two. Number two. Before you said that it finished the driest, it 
it had more of a kind of a dry aftertaste. Yeah, finish. Number, number two is the driest to mm. me. Mm. And perhaps maybe that dryness is a little bit more minerality to it too. And that's the other thing I was gonna say. It certainly has a lot of mineral um, yeah. type flavors at yep. the end, especially in the aftertaste. Yep. Um, but th there's but there's not much difference really. Like I'm trying to like pull out like completely. Like, ah, it's crazy different. But yep. I think just the dryness is the biggest difference. Yeah, I'm yeah I, agree. I agree. Okay. And then number three. Number three is a very fruity nose. <laughs> so that's that's interesting. It's um, kind of got that. It's maybe it's just pulling like a lot of the caramel notes from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Grain is there too. Yeah. Mm. And and yet it's it's not as dry as number two. Yep. But it it definitely is doesn't have the the coating. You know, it, it yep. doesn't have that at all. Yep. It's nice. It's kind of like the best of. The, it might be my favorite of the, of the three. Okay. So yep. uh, my next question for you, without having to really put you on the spot, if you're going to rank them in order of preference, what would you do? Uh, three, two, one. So that was my preference too. I've tasted these before. Okay. And that was my that's interesting. What, that's what I came up with too. That's oh, weird. All right, all right. Cut. Okay, we're done. Thanks. Um, okay. So let me tell you um, a little bit what I detect. On the first one, right, number one. Yeah. I actually get a flavor that is a little bit is a little bit of like a a, a, a phenol in there. Okay. So I, I sort of and, and it lingers in the pal a little bit. Um, uh, I can see what you're saying with a little bit of a, a slickness, a diacetyl slickness. Mm. Um, but I, I get like this characteristic, th there's a flavor component to it that is a little bit phenolic to me. And the other thing, I viewed number one as tasting the most homebrewy. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And that little twingy <laughs> phenolic thing, yeah. to me, is home that homebrew yeah. thing, right? Nope. It's not a twang, twang. It's not, but it's a, there's a, there's a, a phenol component to it, a very subtle, okay. but it's there, I, right. I, I think. Um, but the base beer manages to fight through it, and I can taste the toast. There's a little bit of toast there, mm -hmm. and there's a little bit of caramel there. Yep, yep. Um, the middle one being um, the driest one, um, this one, there's a very, there's a subtle sweetness to it, but I think the, the crystal malt, it gets, it's, it's, it's sort gone. of, yeah. the corners are a little bit dull. Yeah. It doesn't, right, it's, it doesn't pop out at you. Uh, the last one to me is the richest. It's got a nice mouth feel. It's a little fuller than I'd want to, but again, if I was gonna rebrew with this yeast and this recipe, maybe that means just changing the mash temperature, right? I mean, so it's about optimizing process yeah. for the yeast you're gonna sure. use too, right? Sure. I mean, this yep. is just try to one size fits all here. But I think that the, it's toasty, there's a caramel note to caramel it. Caramel note comes through. And there's through, a good, yeah. there's a biscuit background from the Maris Otter. To me, when I envision what a brown ale English brown it's should down, taste like, yeah. it is this. this and this is the closest I think I've ever come to the mark. Mm. For me. And um, maybe some of it has to do with those blonde roasted oats, right? Potentially. So, are you ready to learn I'm, what the yeasts are? <laughs> yes, it's going to like blow All my right. mind. That'll be next week. Oh. So, yeah, so, here we go. So. Number one yeah. is the old standby. This is Fermentus S04. O4, okay. And I have read, recently read, before I tasted this, this flight, um, someone was complaining about that character that sometimes comes out in S04. Really, the homebrewy thing. And I can think of sometimes when I've used it and gotten huh. this phenol note and sometimes not gotten it. And I don't know if it's based on temperature yeah, it's or strength right? of the pitch, like how quickly yeah. it take off, lag time. I, there's a lot of variables that go sure. into this stuff, right? Sure, sure, so, sure. Okay. But that one to me was the most homebrewy. And interestingly enough, I've sort of started to shy away from SO4 anyway. And I think maybe that's why, right? Because beers it. come out less than stellar. Mm -hmm. Now, to be fair, I've done a lot of beers where I repitch SO4. So when a beer is done, and, and it, SO4, to be fair to it, is really great on repitch. It's even better on like third generation repitch. Wow. So something to be tried in the future. Keep it up. Um, okay. Number, I'll go to number three. Okay. Number three is. Nottingham. No. No, is uh, White Labs 007, which is dry English, which, dry is, English. The, which is the Whitbread strain. Got it. Okay, now the reason why I put this in this mix is because 
When I'm not using SO4, I used to buy a lot of OO2, which is the ESB strain, um, but I sort of started to not like the character of that as much, and I was looking for better attenuation. Um, and so I was lured into trying this dry English ale yeast. So I'd used this a handful of times <laughs> uh, to make some beers, yep. and I sort of like the character. Yep. And interestingly enough, it really actually shines through here, because we both like this as our favorite. Yep. Number two was the, the wild card for me in this whole bunch. This is Y Yeast 1187, which is the infamous Ringwood strain. Uh. <laughs> and I threw this in here Whoa. to see if I could generate that, that classic diacetyl butter. butter beer, but it's not in here. It's it's the driest it's of the three. It's the yeah, it is, wow. and it is the driest of the three. So it fermented really well, mm. and I think even on the Y yeast spec sheet for this yeast, they say, you know, it has this flavor, which is great. It has this, which is great, and it flocculates, which is great, but requires a good diacetyl rest. Now these beers, I, I tend to ferment longer than maybe most people do, just because I'm lazy or I don't get around, but <laughs> I was I really wanted to see if I could get that flavor out of, give the yeast yep. a fair shake by letting it clean up. And it's definitely cleaned up. There's very yeah. little diacetyl here. Yeah. Um, there's a little bit of a body-ish component to it, but I think I'm dreaming it because I know it's Ringwood. Yeah. Um, I would so. I would say of, if you were if you were going to ask me about body, I would say this has the thinnest of, of the three. Yeah, and it is it is the, the driest of the three, too, as far as terminal That's gravity That's so goes. wild. They all attenuate, they all actually performed almost above and beyond what their predicted percent attenuation is. Yep. Um, the dry English ale yeast, the 007, was pretty much in the range uh, that's reported to be 70 to 80 percent and this is 76 percent attenuation but the other two like um the so4 was 80 percent and the ringwood was 80 was i'm sorry 80 percent and then 84 percent for the ringwood and they both tap out at like 75 percent and so, what was your fermentation temperature again you um so these guys start off fairly cool at like 65 to 68 degrees ambient yep. and then i just let them free rise as they take off interestingly enough the two liquid strains took forever to take off. Yes. They, mm. it, it took, and I was like, oh man, this might be a, a bust experiment. Because the SO4, the dry yeast, boom. Like 24 hours later, boom, it was fermenting. These other guys took about 48 hours to start to come to life, which That's I thought was weird. And I did yeah. pitch um, the whole pack. Because I, I just wasn't sure how I was going to normalize like half a pack of the liquids to so much of the dry. So I just sort of picked the whole pack. Now those those two packs were maybe a little bit old mm. and maybe that's why it took some time for them to come around, but they did come around and ferment. So anyway, so wow. this is a really big thing for me. So for me, it's sort of like in my mind thinking about, um, you know, sort of like Battle of the Bands. <laughs> I like this one. So I think next time we see an English ale yeast experiment, I will definitely ferment with this one yep. and then move on to two more in that round. Uh, whether it be another brown ale, I don't know, or something else, I don't know. But um, I think um, I've got some other English yeast that I want to try. Interestingly enough, when you look at the White Labs catalog, the Y yeast catalog, despite the fact that everybody brews a pale ale and whatever, yeah. the, the most number of strains in these uh, catalogs is like oh, these English. There's like usually eight to nine <laughs> English ale yeast strains, yeah, true. Um, whereas only like three or four you know, American type styles or yep. whatever, or, or weird blends of American styles and things like that. I wonder if that's just a Maybe product. the Belgian category is probably oh, bigger. True, but, true, yeah. true. I just wonder if that's just a product of, um, you know, home brewing and how it got st started off where yeah. you were like, oh, well, there's all these English strains and yeah. that was something that you could brew easily at home, yeah. you know, room temperatures, all yeah. that stuff. So I, I also think too is a lot of English beers are bottle conditioned. Yes. Yeah, so so it's when easy to these labs were getting started, <laughs> all they had to do was smuggle a bottle home and then they had it. Yeah. Yep. Right? And so, then you, there you go. So cool. I loved this experiment. I love this beer. Yes. Um, and uh, I'm really psyched about the way, the way it came out. Something I've wanted to do for a long time and I'll definitely be repeating it and doing a little bit more. All right. I'm, I'm going to vote for Nottingham for the next uh, round yep. robin yep. to go up against uh, 007 to see how that comes out. Mm -hmm. And then we can let the audience choose another one. Yep. Um, we'll definitely let the people to put comments if yeah, they're- Yeah, put some comments. To, if they want to choose another English train what to like go up against. face off against these. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So would you do another brown ale? I mean- <sighs> I might just to keep it, yeah. keep it even and um, maybe not tweak this recipe because I think I, I really like this recipe came out. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, I think uh, I used to brew a lot of uh, 
bitters, ordinary bitters, standard bitters. I mm. mean, it just as well might might try to do it here. I don't know if I want to go as far as like a porter or a stout. I just uh, might be a little bit, there might be a lot going on there. Sure. So I sort of think that this, somewhere in between the idea of English pails and porters and stouts, like this sits somewhere in the middle to give you a good idea of how's it going to play with malt, how's it going to play with the hot character. Yep. And go for it. Agreed. That. Cool. And keep room with Fuggles. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I think we need more three. Yeah, more of number uh, three. <laughs> So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Um, certainly we take a lot of input from our audience and uh, you know, we've been doing hop experiments or at least hop evaluations for many years. And now we're getting into yeast experiments. Uh, we've done malt uh, comparisons too. Um, I think that I can say that we have another yeast experiment on the way. So we'll be uh, posting that up. So uh, check us out every week. We post another video, uh, subscribe to our channel and um, you know, leave a comment below. What English yeast strain would you like to be in the next competition yes. for the best brown ale of all time? Something like that. <laughs> for John and Mike, brewdashdudes.com, brew on. Cheers.